<sighs> Welcome to my house. Where? We're doing switching reels. <laughs> I'm Trenton. Uh, I'm Connor. And that was probably the strangest intro we've done so far. Yeah. But I doubt it will be the strangest by the Forever. time we're finished. No, I think yeah. we have some, some pretty spooky <laughs> ones. It's going to be great. <laughs> Alrighty, what did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched The Two Towers. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Yes. Um, Great movie. Yeah, and one of one of my favorite Lord of the Rings movies, at the very least. Yeah, absolutely. Um, act, well, there's only three. There's only a few <laughs> Lord of the Rings movies. Unless we're counting. It's some my of the it's my old favorite Hobbits one. And old Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, we're not. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are weird movies. Yeah I, yeah, I saw them a long time ago, and I played the Hobbit game. But, yeah. Um, I didn't. Watch if you go back and watch them as an adult, it's it's surreal. Nice. They're very, very strange. I'm so excited for that. So who um, do we, we recommend this movie to? Probably the same people we did last week. I would recommend it to the people that have seen <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring. And therefore, you inherit the list of assumptions <laughs> we made there and recommendations that we made there. Um, but you, I wouldn't recommend it to the people that we maybe recommended Fellowship to. That haven't seen Fellowship of the Ring yet. Yeah, you wouldn't for sure. Yeah, uh, if you, it would make no sense to jump in on this movie. I, I, they, had, they had a good recap. <laughs> they had a recap of one very, very distinct <laughs> element, and I think it was a great distinct element. But uh, if recap. you hadn't seen Fellowship, no you, sense. yeah, why are they there? What uh, is this thing? Who's that guy? Who's yeah. That kid? <laughs> Um, alrighty. So, yeah, I agree, actually. It, it really, this one really does build on the first one yeah. a bunch and sets up the third one. So if you haven't watched the first one, just do that first. Yeah. Just go do it. Yep. Spend some time, watch the first one. Also, I'm not hours. entirely sure why you're listening to our podcast if you haven't seen the first one. Well, maybe not our entire podcast, but at least this episode. Well, yeah, that's what podcast. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, actually. Yeah. Like, oh, two towers. What's that about? The Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, second yeah. of the <laughs> trilogy. So, uh, and our, our last episode was on Fellowship. So You can go and watch that one. Yep. We're making this super <laughs> easy for you. Please go back. Um, so does it deserve its place on the list? Its place, I believe, is 14. Actually, that's about where I'd put it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so everything else is just higher for you, higher than it should be. Yes, ah. actually. Um, and that's not because I dislike Lord of the Rings or I think that they're bad movies. 14 is still spectacularly really good, good. Really good. Um, in, in my mind. I just I don't think that it maybe deserves to be quite that high. I don't know. Um, I will say uh, possibly the best action scene in any All of movie history. ever. Like, um, maybe not. I would, I would clarify, not action scene, but battle, battle scene, scene. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, um, the distinction there being like a one-on-one -on -one fight. There are some better one-on-one -on -one fights, absolutely, in, in but cinema. But a, a largely choreographed like, giant melee between two armies. Yeah, nothing better. Yeah, yeah than no. This. I, I don't. I don't think there has any. There has been anything before or since that was better than this um in that in that realm yeah so that's another recommendation um to go and watch the first one yeah if you haven't yet because yeah. then you can come to the second one and have just one of the best battle scenes of armies of all time yeah yeah absolutely um what do you think does it deserve its place on the list do you think it should be at 14 I like it at 14. I can't wait to go and see some of the ones in between that are scattered in between these Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. to go and say, oh, was this movie individually better than or worse than these other movies? Yeah. Um, I do, like, on a rewatch, I, I can see why some people would go and put Fellowship above Two Towers. Mm -hmm. Probably just for, the, like, the beginning of the story. Yeah. Um, but, like, this one is just has so many good elements in it. Like, it, it really... Yeah. If if it were it's a, like if you were evaluating them in isolation, this one was is better, I think, than Fellowship. Yeah. Well, and I I think the other part, and I'm I'm looking forward some, right? And like so so we got to take into account that we haven't watched 
yeah, Return of the King, King yet. Right. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just a fan of Rohan. I think as a there's vision. yeah. I think just as a like aesthetic element and like the situation that they're in i find it so much more compelling than gondor we'll get into gondor later yeah we'll but in a second. um actually next week next week but. yeah um but uh yeah i think that's part of the reason that this one is elevated so much for me is because just rohan plays such a central mm -hmm. part in it um and it's i just find it fascinating absolutely no nope, totally agree with that um so ratings where would you put this on enjoyment and technical this one is probably an enjoyment 10 for me nice um it's a technical nine okay cool and the reason is i feel like they went super overboard with the um fading people out of different scenes oh they did have a lot of fades. there was like there were like at or four. least four that I yeah. saw through it, and I'm like, okay, did did Faramir need to fade out of the river? <laughs> like, was that was that important? <laughs> Ooh, and Aowen fading over um, Aragorn. Yeah, some I, spoilers in this part. Yeah, um, they're light. I don't. Yeah, light I don't spoilers. think anybody actually. Exactly. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't think we've ruined anything for oh, anyone. Yeah. No, um, there's some fading. There's a guy named Faramir. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Anyway, we are we are close to the spoiler warning. But what what would you put this as? Yeah. So um, I'd probably put it at nine point five on enjoyment, which mm -hmm. I think is at or above what I did for fellowship. Okay. It was easier to stay awake through this one. Very much so. Yeah. Like the it keeps the pace the entire time, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, and technical, I think that they're like, especially watching it this time, um, I didn't again, start noticing the dated CG. Yeah. Um, and some of the artistic choices were a little bit weird, Yeah. but not awful. Yeah. So I'd still put this at, I'd probably also agree with a nine. Okay. Um, yeah. It's, it's I, very, very well done. I definitely agree that there were some strange artistic choices, but I don't think that there were any that I went like. It breaks the immersion. My the word, team. Jackson. What exactly. were you thinking? <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't think that there is anything that was egregious. No, you know, I completely agree with you. So absolutely, I was just thinking of the lyrics of Miss Jackson. I was like, oh, I'm yeah, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> awesome. So this is where we're going to go into more deep spoiler territory. Yep. Um. So I, as as I normally do, if you like what we're doing here, please like it go and put a rating on our podcast subscribe put some comments there tell your friends yeah i think that more people would like to see this so. tell us what we're doing wrong please tell us what yeah. we're doing wrong i would love to hear <laughs> that uh that would be great yes um summary of the movie summary do you do you movie. want me to do this one because i think see i feel last like, time we decided I, yeah, that <laughs> i feel like yeah i think you can do the summary on this one and then again if you get long-winded maybe we'll just switch yeah. it um, so we've got, uh, basically three perspectives. Um, first perspective with Sam and Frodo, uh, they are trying to get to Mordor and they meet up with Gollum. Who's a drug dealer. Who's and a, also a drug user. Sorry. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> anyway, they get, uh, they get caught up by, um, some Gondor soldiers and meet Faramir and Faramir decides to let them go. Uh, because he uh, understands the issues that the ring is causing um, and the issues that they caused his brother. Um, meanwhile, we have um, Merry and Pippin who uh, escape from their capture in the first movie. Woo. Um, they find their way into Fangorn Forest where there are some uh, tree herders. Tree talker. Tree yeah. Talking trees. Uh, called Ents. Um, and they hang out with the Ents for a while. And then they convince the Ents to destroy um, a big old city. Big old city. Uh, full of orcs. Um, and in our third perspective, we've got uh, Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn who... Uh, Start out following the hobbits. Uh, only once. There's two of them. Uh, yes, the there are two of them. Uh, oh. <laughs> the 
the the ones that were captured by orcs um they follow them until they are diverted when they find out that they escaped and gandalf's alive um, and gandalf's alive yep uh and so they all go to rohan uh and um find out that uh, Saruman is going to try to destroy all of the people, the race of men uh, on, on a large scale, and retreat to Helm's Deep, where they have a giant battle with yeah, uh, a huge amount of uh, Urukai, orcs. 10,000. Yeah. Um, 10,000 of them. And uh, Gandalf... Uh, leaves before all of this, goes and gets the disgraced riders, brings them back, and saves the day. Absolutely. So no, that was that, was that really is good. about as short as you can make the summary of this. I think. I feel like actually, like having... because while someone else is doing a summary, you're thinking about how you could make it shorter. Yeah. Uh, the entire time. <laughs> so I think this is very beneficial. Uh, okay. One yeah. of us doing it, and then <laughs> potentially the other one, one of us even sum upping more. Yeah. Go um, for it. Where we've got Frodo and Sam uh, continuing their ring journey, they find a drug user who acts as a guide to get them into Mordor, and uh, eventually they get there. Well, they get to almost there. We've got Merry and Pippin who have been abducted and then they're not abducted and then they are friends with a tree and they go to a big tree meeting and then they tell the trees to go and destroy a tower. One of the two towers of two towers. <laughs> and then you have uh, Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn, hot buns, doing things. They're following the... Aragorn <laughs> is hot buns? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um they are following Merry and Pippin. Eventually, they're like, oh, actually, they're safe because Gandalf tells them, what, where's Gandalf? He's here. And then they go free the King of Rohan from Saruman. They go to Helm's Deep where they are trying to be safe. And then there's just 10,000 orcs. Whoops. And they eventually kill them. But it's a lot of casualties. Okay. Yeah. I feel like one. I think we're going to have to do this. Just go yeah. back and forth. <laughs> Two summaries. This is going to be fantastic. It's fantastic. This is I love it. Okay, cool. All right, so there's your summary. Um, again, watch the first one first. Yeah. Please. Yeah, uh, this one will make no sense. To Not as much sense, at least. Going in completely blind. Yes, completely agree. All right, so initial reactions, rating. Um, or I did rating. So, and then yeah. again, initial reactions are still hard because we've seen this so many times. Right, yeah. Um, this one does always, like make me feel this like emotional swelling in my chest that uh, I don't think I get from any, either of the other films. Um, but uh, I think as far as initial reactions go, I think this is absolutely one for me that just, it does like make my heart feel things yes, in a way absolutely. that the other ones just don't. Um, and it, it throws around your feelings like yeah. when Theoden is finally awake again and yeah. mourning for his son. Like that gets you close to tears almost every time, no matter yeah. who you are. Like, yeah. Ooh, that's rough. Um, and I mean, we can kind of transition this into standout scenes and yeah, performances. Point, exactly. But like uh, Eowyn's uh, song during that is just oh, heartbreaking. Hard. And so well done. And it's one of those things where you, you can't, like, I don't know anyone who knows the lyrics to that song. Nope. <laughs> um, because my friends are nerds, but there is, like, a cutoff there. Yeah. And most of my friends are not on the other side of that cutoff. Um, but uh, as, far as, as far as that song, like, it is just gut-wrenching. Absolutely. Um, despite having no clue what she's saying. Yep. Um, the emotions she puts into that are it's again like going to the opera and they don't understand Italian or whatever it is he's singing in yeah um, I think if I remember correctly that is one of the scenes that's cut from the theatrical edition um, which I would say this is one of the one of so I, I think Fellowship has more scenes that just kind of transition really well from the theatrical straight into uh the extended cut yeah um i don't think you can really tell the difference uh between scenes there there are quite a few in this one where i'm like okay this was it's one that you can definitely bit. see why they cut it for time and that kind of thing um but i do think that they add so much 
in a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, scenes like Eowyn singing as, uh, as uh, Phaedrid? Phaedrid, yes, thank you. Um, is is buried. Mm -hmm. um, scenes like at the very end where all of the Urukai run into the forest and get just <laughs> demolished by the trees. <laughs> um, and like scenes like that are just so good at building so good. Um, into a the world. Yeah, exactly. And right? into and into the emotional payoff. Like yeah. it's it's so so good. The last march of the ends is yeah. Just so well done. Yeah. Like you is. look at it yeah. every time and you're like, wow, there's not necessarily a lot of them, but they're huge and they're mad. Like yeah. The entire Isengard battle is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so good. This is just, this is filled with scenes for me that I could just gush about. Yeah. Because. Absolutely. I, I, again, I just, I love this film so much. Um, it's it's one of my favorite fantasy stories, and it's my favorite section of it of the fantasy um, story. It's fantastic. And again, I I think it has the greatest battle sequence in cinema. Yeah, absolutely um, agree. And there are lots of reasons why Helm's Deep is that, and we're in standout scenes, so, so I'm just gonna go for yeah, it. Just go for it. Um, the lighting. The lighting <laughs> is phenomenal. Um, <sighs> they do an incredible job leading up to it with just illustrating how screwed they are. Yeah, absolutely. How huge this other army is and how few people they have. And then the entire battle, I actually watched somebody break down the Helm's Deep battle and they were comparing it to the Avengers Endgame uh, battle and why it was Much significantly better. better. <laughs> um, but uh, the the wax and wane of the um the tide of that battle mm -hmm. is incredible like every time there's a step forward there's another step back yeah and so there's just constantly this tension pushing while pulling. you're while you're seeing like okay these guys got to the gate and they're breaking it down well now aragorn and gimli have come out and are pushed them back pushing them all back well now they've got these siege engines that are uh, uh, throwing huge ladders up to the top walls. Exactly, and even before that, you have the like, oh wow, this is a huge army. They're attacking this wall. Yeah, and, but they're they're doing a pretty good job repelling them. Like, right, it, yeah. it sucks. They're yeah. still fighting and dying, but like, not nearly to the extent that we would have imagined. And then the wall blows up. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, the, and then I I loved the I love the wall blows up at the same time that they begin really banging down the door. Like, that was oh, a yeah. well-orchestrated attack. Like, you could just see, <laughs> oh, they're hitting you from two sides very well. Yeah. And one of them you didn't expect, so even better. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and, like, yeah, if you look at other ones, the one of the things I really like about the Hell's Deep battle is you get to see, like, regular people mm -hmm. fighting as well. Like, you get multiple close-ups yeah. with random Urukai just killing people or random elves and men just killing yeah. Urukai. You don't only focus on the main characters. And well, it, and like, I think I think that is part of the throws reason. you in. I, I think that's part of the reason I connect with yeah. Rohan as a nation yeah. in this one is because you do get very much thrown in with the peasants. Exactly. Throughout throughout the entirety of this film. And the five to ten minutes that they spend are more than that. Um like showing, hey, we we are choosing the dregs of the society that we still currently right, have yeah. to fight this because we don't have anyone else. Right, like, yeah. This is what we have. We have more weapons than we have people. Like, yeah, <laughs> which is wild. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think Helm's Deep. Again, we we could make the entire podcast about on Helm's, Helm's Deep. Deep very easily. Yeah, actually. Um, um. So yeah, and then so again, and that happen. That's happening along. I love how it spans so much. Like the beginning of Helm's Deep, the Ents haven't actually fought. Um, or like are still quote unquote deciding to go. Yeah, and they're fight still in the end guard. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and at the end of it, you have the the trees have already moved over to go and 
eat the orcs. So um, it's a one a long battle, and yeah. two so much happens during it. So and that's like half of the movie almost is at Helm's Deep and working too. I thought it was only like thirty minutes, maybe forty five. Well, okay, so the second half of the movie starts with them going to Helm's Deep. Yeah. Um, and so, and by the time they get to Helm's Deep, um, they have. I think they're probably at Helm's Deep for a good hour and a half. But yeah. the battle, I probably would agree with you, is only a half an hour, yeah. 45 minutes. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, sorry, I was thinking just good. of the battle. Absolutely. And it's, and again, just gorgeous. So, um, are there any, is there anything else that like we enjoy outside of this glorious battle? Um, I mean, I, I enjoy a lot of the other scenes in this. Um, but a lot of it comes back to actually a performance for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that the actor who played Theoden, I don't know him from anything else. Nope. But I think he has one of the most underrated parts in mm -hmm. the entire series. Yep. Um, I think he absolutely nailed it. And um, the scene or the scenes in the, uh, the throne room... Um, are just like he he moves from like very believably from a character that is sickly and old and <laughs> decrepit to like a warrior king that has to sort of solve it problems <laughs> yeah and <laughs> and cares about his people Absolutely, so deeply so deeply um and the fact that he was able to bring both of those to the table in the same performance yeah. um and display a pretty wide range of emotions in that. Yeah. You know, from uh, like his despair to um, his uh, resilience to mm -hmm. uh, even some self loathing when he's talking about how he traded, uh, treated Eowyn while he was under uh, Saruman's curse. Mm -hmm. Like it's just. It's incredible. Yeah. And um, so human. Like, it's just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, honestly, his performance may be one of the reasons why, just in the story of the Lord of the Rings books and films both, he's one of my favorite characters. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, I, I think he just does a spectacular job. So well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. No, he, he does absolutely amazing in yeah. this entire performance. Yeah. Um, Eowyn also, I feel like, does a very, very good job with her roles yes. that she she has. She doesn't have as much of a... She's a very consistent character throughout mm -hmm. all of it. Like, yeah. she's been here the whole time. Right, while, yeah. Even though um, the king was unconscious under mm -hmm. Saruman's control. Um, and continues being that way. We have some pretty good development from her. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that she does a really good job um as well though of of going from she sort of embodies the sadness that surrounds rohan mm -hmm. for the beginning part of the film yep right like i can't watch the beginning scenes in the throne room without feeling this sort of sadness and i think that is almost entirely placed on that actress's shoulders i don't absolutely and the lighting yeah yeah the lighting lighting does a good job of it as well Ugh, and Wormwood's um, performance as well. Like, Grima's... Oh, yeah. Like, uh I think he does a good portion of what makes it feel sickly. Absolutely. But I, not the, not I, the sadness. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, there is just this oppressive sadness in all of the Rohan. Entire court um, up to that point. Yeah. Um, and I think it is, like, Gandalf even meant, like, comments on it on the way in. Like, mm -hmm. the... It's they've made the throne room to feel sickly and dark. Yeah. Like you have very similar camera shots um, after Theoden's awake when everything's lit up yes. as you do beforehand. And you're like, no, this isn't the same room. Like, yeah. This is a completely different set. Yeah. And I don't I don't know that they did anything except throw some more braziers in there. Exactly. And um, some more light. I mean, yeah. rearrange the tables. Like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's astounding. Yeah, set design here is fantastic. It and was all of the yeah. set design here was great. Yeah, um, and I think I don't know. This is this is just a masterclass in everything. Yeah, um, like the the camera. I was actually 
this time, and I think I've noticed it a few other times, but this one it really stood out to me was uh, when Wormtongue is talking to Eowyn, uh, when she's standing over uh, Theodred's body, yeah, and just this constant circle that the camera makes, and it's just gorgeous. It's it's incredible, and it it just makes you so uncomfortable. And Absolutely, like this is a really bold move for like like to take this shot mm-hmm. to try to convey the emotion that they were doing and they did, and it, they did it so well yeah the camera shots in this are fantastic yeah like they ha- and all of the different scenery shots that you have yeah um the one uh, of aragorn and panning to helm's deep was fantastic and oh yeah whenever it's just following them at the beginning while they're pursuing the um orcs is just yeah again like yeah. so good and they're like oh look new zealand is a great set isn't it <laughs> <laughs> oh. if only they could have gotten new zealand for the hobbit <sighs> rough they absolutely had new zealand for the hobbit oh they did yeah okay <laughs> well it just i do have a question wasn't as good um a very important question mm-hmm. do you know that um, yes, I did. <laughs> Vigo Vigo Mortensen broke his toe when he kicked that helmet after learning that Mary and Pippin are dead. Yes, oh, I okay. did know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering. Anyway, uh, what about the then when they were training the horse to kneel next to Vigo, they had to do it with um, stuffed dummies because he would crush any normal humans before that point. I didn't know that. Yeah. But that doesn't surprise me. No. <laughs> um, let's let's move on. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, let's talk about themes. Themes. Yeah. Um, which this is a Lord of the Rings film, so yeah. it is packed with the lots of, of different good and evil themes. As as a as a core thing, and how to yeah. how to like stand up to that. Because, yeah. again, Theoden is the perfect example through this entire movie of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between, like, being controlled by um, sadness and despair and having to be courageous anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, um, that ha- happens when he's under Saruman. is like, the perfect manifestation of just being down and sad and just yeah. absolutely gone. Um, and then he becomes assertive. Mm-hmm. Um afterwards and then his son is dead and he has to go bury his son and then he has to become courageous again and take everyone to helm's deep right yeah um and then um like the it it culminates in the end where he (laughs) aragorn has to again aragorn has to convince him to um go and ride out with him because he's just so like nope everybody's dead sorry guys yeah um i think that this one does kind of use that particular thing, like like standing up to evil, mm-hmm. um, as a build off of what they did in Fellowship. Yeah, right. In Fellowship, you don't have nearly as much of like we need to stand up to evil. There isn't as I much mean, of it yet. Like there's, there's it's yeah. a growing darkness, but well, and and most of what we see through Fellowship is them running into evil, going, we are completely outmatched for this. We need to get out of here. Yeah, that's true. It's almost always running from yeah. the evil, the Balrog, and yeah, um, yeah, the the goblins and all the that goblins. stuff. Even even when they even the fight orcs. them, yeah, um, it's it's something like we fought them, and now there's more coming, so we need to get out of here. Absolutely. Um, whereas this one, that's I think, really, was a very good point. Wow. Yeah, um, I I think with this one, you're right. It it was very much about standing up to evil, yeah. and we can see that in all three of the um perspectives perspectives um where you're right like theoden is is absolutely like one of the the main pieces in that um but we also have uh mary and pippin trying Mm -hmm. to convince the ents um of what they need to what they need to do and almost appealing to their uh sense of belonging like as world yeah, yeah right um, and saying like you know if if you live in this world, this war is the the evil anything. the yeah. evil will affect you as well. Yeah. Um, and then with Sam and Frodo, um, you have their interactions with Faramir and Gollum. And, yeah, 
um, and they show very different uh, sort of trajectories mm -hmm. uh, in relationship to standing up to evil. Yep. Um, which I always love the scene where uh, Smeagol tells the other side of himself, tells Gollum to leave, to leave and yeah. never come back. And he does when he's down and out. Exactly. Right? He's, he's just been, at the very least, he feels like he's just been betrayed. Mm -hmm. He's been beaten, beaten. And now Gollum comes creeping back in. And you even hear him once say, go away, leave us alone. Yeah. And Why he doesn't, he doesn't go away. Yes. Um, and that's when he gives in. Um, and Faramir, we see almost the exact opposite, right? We see him go from someone who is very willing to accept evil to go and try yeah. and do good, hopefully, or to try and impress his father. Well, essentially, he's he's willing to use other people for his own ends. Very true. Yeah. Um, and by the end of the film, he realizes this is something beyond me, right? This is this is evil. This isn't something that I can control and and you know keep watch over and this mm -hmm. is bigger than me um and the way that i stand up to this evil is to let these hobbits go even though it he like his life is forfeit he, exactly. he specifically says then my life is forfeit yeah um and i think that's that's just a really powerful way to show his character i wouldn't even say it's a character growth no because you see how he, that's how he was in the flashback like that's the kind right, of person yeah. he is is the, yeah. the the caring for the larger group he left us Gilead because he wasn't going to sacrifice the men to try right, and yeah. keep it under these odds like maybe right. he could have for sure but most of his men would have died what's the benefit yeah. there right yeah um and so yeah i i really appreciated that mm -hmm. um one other thing that I, I saw is we see elements of uh, trust come in uh, on this one as well. Um, like just in a lot of different places. Generally, yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Um, there's the, the trust relationship that uh, Frodo has with Sam and yeah. also that he has Starts with Smeagol and, yeah. and Gollum. Um, you have the trust relationship that uh Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas have to have yeah. with uh with Gandalf uh going and coming back. Yeah. Um and even internally, like there's a lot of there's a trust dynamic very much going on, at least between Gimli and Legolas and Legolas and Aragorn. Mm -hmm. Um with the like the stress starts getting to Legolas and mm -hmm. um he has to come to his senses at some point and be like, Hey, sorry, I doubted you. Like you've, you've done a great job so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you even see it in the, in the battles and the way mm -hmm. the battles take place. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there's constantly times when each of them should have been dead. If not for it's one of the other, one of the other ones yep. showing up and saving them. Absolutely. Um, from something that they didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think the, Oh, and and the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the the trust element between uh, basically everyone in Theoden. Yeah. Um, like there's Ooh, there's. Do you trust your king? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, there's just there's so much uh, that is thrown around as far as trust in this, and I I think it there are some really really powerful moments because you see the trust that these characters have for one another. Yep. Um. Or don't have, as the case may be, um, and that's specifically with uh, Gollum. But mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's still a, a really significant, I guess, departure from what we're seeing with all of the other characters. Absolutely. Um, and I think this is the first time that I've watched this and actually felt pity for Gollum through most of the film. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he even, is trying. Even like, toward the end, like where like Faramir is unreasonably rough with him. Unreasonably so. Um and yeah, he's taken him down a, a dangerous path and he didn't tell him about it, but like he's also taking them where 
they said they needed to go. And yeah. after finding out that there was some uh, evil thing mm -hmm. above Minas Morgul, they're still like, yeah, we need to go. Yep. And Faramir still got him by the throat. It's like... There's a lot of tough yeah. stuff going on with Smeagol. Right, like, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, he's, he's just... The, a lot of... He's having a bad time. A really bad time. <laughs> There's one person that is doing their best to um, resonate and empathize and connect with them because they've shared, have a similar experience. Right. Like yeah. Both of them have had to carry the ring. Right. Yeah. Um, but every everyone else looks at Smeagol, Gollum, as a creature of craving. Like, yeah. A this is this is who you are now. Yeah. Nothing that can change that. Yeah. Um, this is also, and I, I think weirdly, I, I feel the theme of, um, industrialization and, uh, harmony with nature Just kind little... of sitting over the entirety of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's but not weirdly, a it's focus, only, but... it's only in this one that it really comes up. Yeah. Like you see, you see a little bit of it in the first mm -hmm. film and like We'll talk about with him later. It's not really not there. Yeah. Like, um, I feel it was an opportunity thing. It was a like, hey, we can go and make this statement. It's actually really easy. Like, it's not even something we had to shove in because it's a, like, it's it's something that happened in the book. We can just capitalize well, I think, on it I slightly. Think, I think the the book is already, like, it has a lot to say about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels weird that it just kind of stops at a certain point. Um, almost like. I think, to my mind, Tolkien said what he wanted to say about yep. it and was like, okay, we're done. Well, we got we more things. Other things to do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, it, it just, I don't think it fit into the rest of the story. Um, but having sort of the literal rise of nature against industrialization yeah. um, is just such an interesting way to, to look at this. And I think it's why that last shot at Helm's Deep is so important as well, mm -hmm. is it is nature's final revenge against uh, people, or in this case, and Urukai, that were, have, have had no respect for it. Absolutely. Um, and did not live in harmony with nature. They just deforested everything. Exactly. Um, and it's just... I, I really love the way that it all comes together. Um, and yeah, I thought I had more to say about no, this, but like... I, I totally agree yeah. with you. That's fantastic. Um, and I, I, I feel, again, that it wasn't heavy-handed. It was a like, hey, there's not going to be magical trees that come and destroy you for doing industrialization stuff, but like there are larger consequences <laughs> right, to yeah. all of this. Yeah. Um, and it's just another, it's another piece of evil. Like it's right, yeah. like a connection with evil, not necessarily right. that industrialization is evil, but yeah. so the the exploitation yeah. of man and nature is yeah. evil. Yeah, and I I think even further it was because Tolkien lived through World War One, right? Yep. And so like industrialization for the sake of war yes. specifically, Ooh. I think is is the the evil that he was thinking Seeing of, specifically. like yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and there is. Um, a lot to be said about industrialization itself. Um, I think on a pretty broad uh, level, most people would agree that industrialization for the sake of killing other people is probably not good. Probably a bad idea. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much disagreement there. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I just, I really love the way that he tackled it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I think that it was very well adapted to the screen as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I kind of just want to touch on the fact, I can calling back to another thing real quick. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't mention it in the next episode, I love the point, fact that you pointed out that like in the last one, it's a run from evil to get somewhere safer. And this one, it's a run from evil, but then stand up to it and fight against it. Yeah. And then the next one, like there's a lot of offensives and obviously yeah, we'll talk true. about that more, but like it's a, it's very much a, a full circle yeah. of fighting against evil and it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is really <laughs> I hadn't cool. Thought I, about that. I hadn't thought like, to the third one, but yeah. Yeah. No, and because the, there's a lot of offense there. Yeah. A bunch of offense. <laughs> so, um, so much. Yeah. Um, Hail Mary offense, but <laughs> offense nonetheless. <laughs> 
Uh, we've already talked about some technical things that we thought stood out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to bring up one that we hadn't talked about in the first one, but Please. was still very much there. Uh, the score. Oh, gorgeous. It's just incredible. Everything here. You can't yeah. have this without the music. Right, like, yeah. It sets all of it. Yeah, I, I can't believe that we missed this on, I on Fellowship. But... But I feel like, though, this one, like you had the very dramatic moments that were... Mm -hmm then counterpointed by just an absolutely fantastic soundtrack or the lack of sound at all. Right, like yeah. The, the burial of um, Thadrid, um has only voice at one point, but at some point it's just quiet. Well, it cuts her off. It cuts yeah. off the song with well, just sure. a, with the sound of the stone <laughs> basically sliding into place even yeah. though the, there's, there's no movement. But, um, yeah. Um, but before that, like while they're pr proceeding to the grave, there was a soundtrack, and then it like right, stops yeah. at some point for her, as well as at the beginning of the Helm's Deep battle, where it's just the clinking of armor and like and the, the rain and the rain. Oh. oh, gorgeous! The rain stops too fast. It does, Absolutely. but it's still fantastic while it's there. Oh, it's so good, <laughs> so good, um, and so yeah. I, I love the momentary connection that you make with the leader of the elves mm -hmm. and to make his death just, a, again, another just nice emotional point where you're like, wow, this sucks and I don't <laughs> like this battle, but I do because it's fantastic. Like, it's yeah. just an emotional depth to it. Yeah. Um, it's like, hey, I have this fantastic speech on the elves coming to go and fulfill their allegiance. Also, the yeah. orcs just killed me. Yep. <laughs> and it sucks. It's over real fast. Yeah, real fast. Um. I saw a connection this time that I had never seen before. What is it? The 300 Spartans. Oh, interesting. 300 against, yeah, you're right. Against 10,000. If I remember correctly, 10,000 was, right. the, was the army of Xerxes when the Battle of Thermopylae was... We'll go find some citations, but I think you're probably correct. Um, And not only that, there is the nod to the fact that there weren't just the 300 Spartans. There were other, like... There were other factions, factions as well that yep. were fighting alongside them, and I just a very knowing point. knowing uh, Tolkien's love of history yep. and mythology. There's no way he didn't not a miss. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, that's a nice coincidence. But I've never noticed that. <laughs> no, that's I've, fantastic. I've watched it tons of times, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, again, it's jam packed. This yeah. entire series jam packed with things that you just yeah. like. Can, could unpack forever yeah it's it's fantastic except so. this time the 300 spartans win <laughs> yeah well, that's nice at least too 300 yeah and then plus plus because you get a wizard yeah. on your side yeah that's always nice the spartans didn't have that yeah not quite they just had an oracle that said that leonidas was gonna die exactly so. <laughs> also this is the, there's a second one there's worm tongue says a very similar thing to frodo mm -hmm. uh, when gandalf arrives um, whereas Frodo just says, you're late. Uh, Worm Tongue <laughs> -tongue is like, oh, late is the hour that this wizard or, or conjurer, um, decides to show up. He doesn't say that part, but, yeah. um, it, it's a, it's a very similar nod back. There's a lot of like late here, like a uh, feeling of I'm talking of being late. Yeah. Um, everyone is late everywhere. Everywhere. Exactly. Aragorn's late. Gandalf's late. Uh, the trees are slow. Not really late, <laughs> but um, you could argue that they were much too late. Much too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good that they got there before all the orcs left. <laughs> After all the orcs left, I mean, um, yeah. Oof. Also, though, we you have to call out. Um, I don't know who the actor is, sadly, but the actor that does all of the movements for Gollum and the voice. For oh, Gollum, uh, Andy Circus. Andy Circus. What? Yeah. Like. Oh my gosh, the ability, the, at least in the voice acting, but also just knowing that he was wearing a green suit the entire time, that <laughs> yeah. like, he was doing all of those movements, like he trained himself to walk on all fours at these very strange angles. Um, it is wild. It's astounding. Yeah. Like, sure, maybe CG needs some touch up, but again, it was done in 2004. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, this is this is absolutely incredible for astounding. the the era. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the fact that it's still like I wouldn't go to a movie and be like that CG was real bad. Yeah, with no, entirely um, specifically with Smeagol. Yeah, there were some parts with like uh, when he's showing the the 10,000 Urukai to 
um, worm the worm tongue. tongue. Yeah. I go, okay, yeah, this looks kind of like video game graphics yes, now exactly. where I'm like, I, I, I know that those aren't, those aren't really Urukai down yeah, there. Now we can go and run simulations with that many people on our computers. Right, like. yeah. <laughs> um, and the, the fact that, like, it, I think it's really contrasted by the fact that so many of the close-ups and things of the Urukai make you forget that they're not real. Yeah. Right? Because the makeup department did just an oh, just incredible job. Absolutely fantastic. Like um, the, again, the quote-unquote practical effects, The just the practical aspects of this movie and all of the movies are fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I like. I I seriously. I watch this and I go, yeah. Orcs and Urukai, they're they're real, real things. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Those yeah. were those were actual people that just got beheaded. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> so that head flying. Yeah, it does a person. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, I completely agree. So yeah. Um, next week's film. Yeah. Next uh, week's film. Return of the King. I have seen that one. You have? Yes. Okay. Thankfully. I, I mean, I feel like if you've seen the first and the second one, you probably oh, would watch the third. Yeah. Um, I have seen it once or twice, and I have made comments on the fact that I've seen it. Yeah. So okay. that's good. So, all right. Well, uh, we will be back for uh, the next episode. Return of the King, and then I finish up our Lord of the Rings section. Yep. And then we are on to a new film, which we will talk about uh, at the end of our Return of the King Love it. That sounds episode. Great. So, yeah. Thanks, Connor. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, how do we end this? <laughs>